We will not tolerate any form of assault or attack upon our border agents like happened yesterday or any attempt to destroy federal property, overrun federal authorities, or bring chaos and violence to American soil. President Trump weighed in tonight. Can you tell he was reading that part off a teleprompter at a rally in Mississippi on what's been a tense 48 hours along our southern border with Tijuana, Mexico. On Sunday, American authorities used tear gas on hundreds of migrants who tried to enter the U.S. illegally. The U.S. government also shut down the San Ysidro port for entry for several hours. Customs and Border Patrol said tear gas was used after several migrants threw rocks at border agents. NBC News reports the tear gas was fired mostly at adult men, but some of it hit women and children, as this already famous photo shows, uh, including Maria Meza, who is the woman seen in this photograph. She spoke to our own Gabe Gutierrez earlier today. When I see that photo, I just want to cry, she says, claiming that she wasn't crossing the border illegally, but trying to reach it to apply for asylum. We have to show you, before departing from Mississippi, the president defended the authorities' actions at the border. Are you comfortable tear gassing children like what we saw in the uh, They're not, as you know, they're not. Uh, they had to use because they were being rushed by some very tough people, and uh, they used tear gas. And here's the bottom line. Nobody's coming into our country unless they come in legally. President Trump also threatened to close the border permanently today, saying, quote, Mexico should move the flag-waving migrants, many of whom are stone-cold criminals, back to their countries. Do it by plane, do it by bus, do it any way you want, but they are not coming into the USA. We will close the border permanently if need be. Congress fund the wall. Well, a lot to talk about. With us to do so, Alan Gomez, immigration reporter for USA Today, and Jonathan Lemire, White House reporter for the Associated Press. Alan, I want to show you one more thing about the tactics used uh, at the border before you and I discussed how usual or unusual this is. Here's the president again. How did you feel when you saw the images of the women and children running from the tear gas? Here's well, I do say, why are they there? I mean, I have to start off. First of all, the tear gas is a very minor form of the tear gas itself. Uh, it's very safe. The ones that were suffering to a certain extent were the people that were putting it out there. But it's very safe. But you really say, why is a parent running up into an area where they know the tear gas is forming and it's going to be formed and they're running up with a child? And in some cases, you know, they're not the parents. These are people, they call them grabbers. They grab a child because they think they're going to have a certain, uh, they're going to have a certain status by having a child. You know, you have certain advantages in terms of our crazy laws that, frankly, Congress should be changing. You know, if you change the laws, you wouldn't be having this problem. So, as we note the body language, we also note the verbiage. A lot to react to there, Alan. Uh, let's start with how far from normal is this? Yeah, I mean, like you're saying, there's several parts of that that I'd like to break down. But um, the idea of tear gassing and deploying tear gas in these kind of situations, it's not unheard of. It's happened at the border before, um, but not when there's these concentrations of, of women and children um, trying to reach the border. Um, his reference to grabbers, um, people grabbing children and coming across uh, the into the United States. There have been isolated cases of that in the past, but predominantly as the family separation um, saga from this summer, as data that we've gotten from that has shown, the vast majority are parents who are coming in here with their children. Um, and why they're coming um, is, I think, just one of the most important parts is that conditions in El Salvador, Honduras, and Guatemala, where the majority of these people are coming from, um, are that bad. Um, and these folks know what a dangerous journey it is. Um, and what they're trying to do is what President Trump has urged them to do and present themselves at a port of entry to request asylum. Um, but that's obviously very difficult right now because they cannot process more than 100 people a day, even though there's these thousands of people in Tijuana trying to get in. So, Jonathan Lemire, we have a 60-40 president thereabouts uh, right now at 60 percent disapproval. How much and what of this plays to his base wheelhouse? 
a lot of it, he, at least in his estimation. This is something he tipped his hand he was going to do for a while. He, of course, made the caravan the centerpiece of this 2018 midterm election. But he and the people, his closest advisors, believe that this is what put him across the finish line in 2016, that the hardline immigration rhetoric, that these, the draconian policies that he's putting out there is what got him elected, and that that's what his base really responds to. And what we are seeing right now is a very early step towards his re-election campaign. The images here, the tear gas, the migrants trying to make a run for the border yesterday for that entry, might as well have been a Donald Trump for re-election campaign ad, at least in his estimation. That's what he wants. We have seen him, this is not a crisis necessarily that he created, but he certainly has heightened it with his rhetoric over the last weeks and months. And he, you have the, what we can only call it, Fearmongering, and now he has. There's such tension on both sides of this issue, and he's put the Mexican government, mind you, in a, in a real bind as well. That this is exactly what he wants in many ways is to have this sort of crisis here where he can look tough, he can respond. We're going to secure the border. He didn't back down, even with the use of tear gas. You heard him say there's mm -hmm. a, a mild form of tear yeah, gas, the good kind, the good kind of tear gas, uh, and that he feels like this is something that looking tough here is going to get his base to respond, and there he feels they're supporting these efforts. Uh, so, Alan, uh, uh, it's hardly morning in America, but uh, if we take what Jonathan said uh, as kind of political fact, uh, we then learned today that Mike Pence and Ivanka are going to represent the United States at the Mexican presidential inauguration. Aside from giving us an arresting visual of these traveling partners, how's that going to look on behalf of the United States? Well, I mean, it just shows that this relationship with Mexico is going to be, continue to be a turbulent one. Um, December 1st is when the new president, Andrés Manuel López Obrador, uh, assumes office down there in Mexico, and it's already been an interesting back and forth between the two. Um, López Obrador, he won office in part by being the anti-Trump candidate. Um, he said that Mexico would no longer do the, quote, dirty work of rounding up migrants on behalf of the United States um, after he won. Things got a little bit better. They talked on the phone. Uh, the President Trump called him a terrific guy. Uh, Lopez Obrador had nice things to say about Trump as well. But just in the last few days, we saw what sounds like the president of Mex uh, the incoming president of Mexico, starting to fight back. Um, the, the U.S. and Mexico have been working on some kind of agreement to try to formalize a process in which these migrants would be able to stay in Mexico while their asylum cases were being adjudicated here in the United States. Um, but then that quickly fell apart. Um, and I think that's a clear indication that they're starting to that those ten, that those fault lines are starting to be established. Um, and yes, the fact that the president of the United States is not going down to the Mexican president's inauguration is, is is pretty stunning, and I think shows that this could be a very very difficult relationship between the two. Jonathan Lemire, in the seconds we have remaining, let's say you are a federal wildlands firefighter in Northern California. You're hearing the president cavalierly talk about shutting down the federal government. Is this another one of these issues? Goes straight to the base, doesn't cut so well with others? I was with the president when he went to California two weekends ago to inspect the damage out there, just purely devastating. And he seemed moved by it, uh, talking to the people who lost their homes, lost their family and loved ones. But yes, of course, this is another moment where shutting down the government may be a good political play in the president's mind, you know, to get this border wall, which of course was his number one campaign issue mm -hmm. and has yet to materialize. But, but it has other effects. And certainly there still trying to manage the, the northern california fire now is largely is under control but there's still a huge rebuilding effort to come and that, that it is hard to argue that this would be seen as a positive move beyond that narrow base that the president still seems so overly focused on those the fox news watching trump supporters who are there for him every day at his rallies but perhaps would not be enough to guarantee him a second term, but we have seen him time and time again not try to broaden his base. He only seems to focus on those core supporters. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.